okay uh, uh, you heard the basic preliminary things about the neutrino detectors or the neutrino what is neutrino and why we are going to looking for the neutrino and now I am going to go a little more in that directions and I am assuming that the basic knowledge you have on in these talks so in my talk there may be little bit of little bit of mathematics or some expression you might have seen you will see that kind of expression so as he uh, was showing that uh, he was telling that we need to go to the underground and actually there is the standard pictures we used to show that okay this is this uh, this is this number of muon who it will go we'll see per meter square per sterian per year and this is the depth when you go water equivalent so this is the somewhere in this ionodetector detector where it will come so there will roughly we'll see this okay three okay 30 uh, 300 neutrino per year will come and 300 muon will per year will go but as he said the neutrino what will be on the surface and that much of neutrino also will be in the detectors so this is just an as an experiment i will just tell you this one more thing this is the neutrino as he said that neutrino it comes from the atmosphere it comes from the new reactor it comes from the sun and actually this atmosphere it produces the neutrino and it was known to the people but it was first detected by an one of the detectors at Kolar Goldfield in 1965 and that is the detectors and that was the detectors was put very deep underground roughly 2.3 kilometers beneath. Okay. And this IONO, that's what it will supposed to come. This is the IONO detector, so as you mentioned, it will come not at that much depth, but in the deeper in this earth, it is roughly 1.1 kilometers. Okay, so that's the things I will talk about, neutrino oscillation and this IONO experiment. Uh, but the, before the talk, I will just give a little bit introduction of this uh, particle physics a little bit then what is the neutrino oscillation what do you mean by oscillations and then how we detect this particle in our means we detect this particle in the instrument or we can say that we have seen a neutrino how we can say that that basic concept then i will talk about the little bit about this i you know experiment okay so now you see this is the something i am showing you from here something is going that and okay something is going that side but sometimes it's coming returning back here now can you tell me that what can you re recollect anything which is similar to this bold foil experiment. experiment okay so that's the this is this we can say that in our high energy particle physics this is this first you can say that kind of kind of an experiment what you have so basically this is this alpha particle is coming in the gold foil it goes and in this area we have this different we have a zinc sulfide we have an, some scintillator materials where this alpha particle hits and there we see something okay so after looking this alpha particle in this different where it hits there we will see some light and using this light we can tell that alpha some particle is goes there and accordingly Rutherford described his theory of this nuclear theory okay so that is this is my basic building so that is this basic things actually in when we define our particle and our knowledge goes on initially people knew that this is this and crystals or this molecule whatever we see that is this fundamental constituent of this particle of this matter so what is that the constituent fundamental constituents uh, but in about 1897 Thomson's 
he was able to extract it out the new electron and then he said that time uh, this is this in the nuclear uh, this atom it is a something called an something at uh, the nucleus and some electrons are there that is some electrons and some positive particle and some negative particles he said the electron take out but it did not say more about it then these are the, uh, the experiment I show the Rutherford experiment there it clearly shows that in the center this is the very tiny area of the atoms where I have all of my masses of this um, uh, matters and this is confined in a small tiny area and the remaining part is the electron cloud okay and then now as the time goes on this is 1909 and 1932 that time this Chadwick he also go to slightly the same kind of experiment then he was able to say that this is what is the nucleus what Rutherford says this is Rutherford says the nucleus there is something all are this bundle but then Chadwick says that this is the nucleus it is made of the two different kind of particles and one is called the neutron and this one is called the protons and that was in 1932 and then as time goes on in 1968 then this is another experiment this is the same kind of the Rutherford experiment a proton a alpha particle hit on a gold file but in this experiment what is this a electron it sits on a nucleus but the electron energy as he was mentioning that in this we are going for the different energy in the different experiment or different source of the different energy and here this alpha particle energy about an MeV but here this electron energy in the GeV so this is the three order of magnitude more energy and that time it was realized that with this experiment this is what we see in the protons this protons is not an one fundamental particle it's made of an what is called so called that quark three quark and some other gluons and so this is the present scenario we say that what the matter we see matters is made of an electrons and this is a nucleus nucleus by the uh, made of the proton and neutron those are made of in some quarks and so this is the at present status we know that this is the fundamental particles but who's know, who knows if we have this more and more energy then we may go little even we may have a substructure of this so as we say they say the prop smaller distance and we get this newer structures and this you may understand little better uh, this way what you say that what is the microscope in the microscope we try to see a small object and the microscope see the small object now another thing is the object what we see that what is the light wavelength of this light we put on the object that wavelength should be smaller than that object that only we can see this object if the wavelength is more than we cannot now the wavelength how can make it smaller and smaller and so this is the some kind of particle physics okay quantum mechanics we say that if the particle has an energy this corresponding is wavelength is smaller and in this previously what I showed earlier here in this one by one we see this newer and newer structures there we have in particles what is this source by which we see them that energy we are gradually increasing and when we are increasing these particles which is by which we say that these are this my nuclear atom then this nucleus proton neutron and the quark that is this proof that probe has the this is the particles so those energy wavelength is smaller than the size of those constituent and so that this was the basic building block of the development of this uh, particle physics and of course is the neutrino physics also so that's the thing another way simply if you can think about that hit a target with a beam and look at the debris harder you hit you go closer you get 
and this is I simply example I say that if you see what is inside this wall you say this is wall is made of in some wooden structures but if you want to say what is inside you hit this wall hit the wall with the hammer or something this wooden structure will come out you will see inside so that way you may see the beak if you want to see this what is inside the beak you hurt it even more you will see this inside the beak so that is this basic principle you use when you go for to look for this inner and more inner and inner of the object and in experiment what you usually do that as I said that this is the energy of this particle by which we detect we say that those are the constituent particle has a smaller and smaller size this is this energy of the particle is increasing and how I can increase the energy that is this basic principles you know that if you have my electrostatic field if the charged particle is there it gain the energy so on that basic technique we increase the energy of the particles and as time goes on we have a newer and newer technique by which we have developed now this is a new oscillator systems where we can oscillate the particles the very higher and higher energy that's the equivalent to this we can say that we have an my probe which goes wavelength is very very small so we can see deeper and deeper inside the part inside the matters okay so now after looking all this as uh, professor digi has shown we have this is this what we call the so called the constituents of matters now we know and he has shown the quark and the leptons and here I just show these all the quarks. Uh, this is the leptons of the neutrino, electron type neutrino, muon type neutrino, and tau type neutrino. And here it shows some of the different animals pictures. And this is roughly you can say that mass of these particles is nearly proportional to the mass of this. Uh, what are the animal it was shown roughly that's the way it goes. Okay, so this we say that constituents are these, these are the quark and leptons and there is an interactions. Let's say when we say the two electron or electron positron, there is an interactions. I know that that interaction mediate, but mediated by a photons. So the photons is propagated and these are these mediators and actually this you go a little more. Then these are the at present, I know that there is a four different kind of mediators which are behind all the interactions we know. So this is this first one is this, this is very commonly known the gravitational force. So actually this is the we call the graviton, gravitational force. This force here this uh, with respect to the sun, this is this earth is rotating, the star and planets. So this is the gravitational force. And then we know this electromagnetic interactions that is mediated by the photons and then you know that this is this main topic of this today's discussion, I mean this week's discussion. This is this uh, weak interactions where this is the radioactive source is gives this uh, alpha, beta, gamma. I will come little more about this and this is how the weak interaction happen and that is the we call the weak interaction, weak decay, weak interaction. It is very, very weak and that another interaction we call this how the two protons in the nucleus binding, this is the two protons, they have the same charge, uh, the charge they should repel, but we know that there is a stable nucleus, how they are binding together, that's called, that is we call the strong interactions, and this mediated by this, another particles is called the gluon, and this photon and gluon are the massless, and these are the particles, the mass, and this is actually at the present knowledge of our theoretical knowledge, we are able to write an unified theory as he was mentioning that we should have given answer in the one answer for all these problems. At present, we have an answer to combining all these, all these three, but not this one. And we hope that eventually we will be able to answer unified answer for all of this okay then those are these fundamental particles we say a constituent matters 
and these are the interactions and then now, now using this what in this nature you observe in nature you observe electron proton that's the basic thing which you see and those we say that these are these quarks and the mesons quarks they are make few of them binding together they form a beson or baryons but realistically pictures let's say if we say the proton how it is it will be looks like this there is many many quarks and it is the interaction and uh, this is they have interacted with each others through these gluons so this is this at present we know up to this much but now we are going to okay uh, this is i can skip so those are the things we know at present as an uh, uh, particle physicist so that is go to the one side now i go to this another part of the things what is the main topics of this discussions again i come back to this uh, this is this my radioactive source we see this alpha beta and gamma is producing and in uh, in the beginning of this last century it was found that this carbon 14 is decay to the carbon nit uh, nitrogen 14 and the beta particle beta is nothing but an electron okay so now if this carbon it goes to this the neutron and beta then this to this carbon has a mass we know the conservation of energy and from the conservation of energy if i see this what is the momentum of this beta it is supposed to come as a fixed point this two body decays this um, momentum is supposed to come to the fixed but in nature we observe this momentum distributions of this is continuous starting from almost zero to this the where is supposed to the peak that is the end point this is the one thing second thing you say that little more in the if i go little particle and uh, this is a physics quantum mechanics if i see what is the spin of this they say that this is the spin zero and this is the spin one this is the spin half now if i just take this combination i cannot make one and half spin i cannot make the spin to the zero okay so looks like this is this this energy conservation this is the very fundamental to the physics similarly this is the spin this is also very fundamental in the physics and we see this if it is happen this kind of an interaction what is observed then it's violate the both of them some basic physics what we developed in many many years then so how this can happen to explain this actually he was showing this pictures of pauli he was explaining that he said that propose a new neutral what call the neutrino like particle to explain the beta spectrum so he says that along with this carbon and nitrogen and beta there is an one new particle is produced so this he said that this is this one particle is produced and that actually has a moment a spin half so this conserve this is the spin statistics and also carry this certain fraction of the momentum so that's why the beta momentum is not constant it is a continuous and also he said that this is the particle it does not interact with the matters you will not able to detect it that's his initial point mainly he was trying to saying that this particle is interact with this material very very rarely so we do not see this so that is the startings of this neutrino physics in around 1930s and then there was many many people postulations that how we can detect it even pauli says that the interaction is very very weak how we can detect so this is this one of the first theory is say that if this chlorine interact with the electrons like that kind of a reverse interaction if i can do then i can produce the argon and electrons and with the threshold we need to some of the energy of the neutrino some threshold energy to produce the interactions we should have this in uh, this is the one experiment and then actually uh, this is as you shows this pictures of the david radio radiochemical experiment first they said that 
this is the neutrino source we have the reactor reactor has a neutrino and if i put these reactors our instrument close to the reactors then it should interact but this that time when this was a postulation the neutrino was postulated that time people did not know that this as you mentioned this is a one kind of neutrino gives produce the charged electron another kind of neutrino produces this uh, positive and another kind of neutrino produces the negative electron negative electrons or what is the electron or another kind will give this opposite sign electron what you call the positrons at that time people did not know that the two kind of a neutrino so that, so that's why this is this neutrino and what you call the anti neutrino so the initial experiment of the david experiment which is close to the neutral reactor it was failed but he was sure that we can make this we can detect the neutrino so this is the solar neutrino so this is a fundamental point is that both are the nuclear reactors but in this reactor what we have we made it here here is coming the neutron fission fission means neutron decays to the proton and the proto proton and the positron and the neutrino and in the sun it is the two proton fusion happen it produce the uh, helium and this uh, uh, neutrino and this positrons and those neutrino are different so then this this with this as you say that carbon tetrachloride and near the reactor the brookhaven and then he put some limit then he made the big detectors and in this day the big detectors is the chlorine in this underground mine as he said that underground mine actually the same underground mine after so many years also used for the different kind of experiment okay but the problem is he was looking this he was making these detectors and many years this is the some pictures i collected 1970 to 1994 so as i showed that sun produce this neutrino neutrino comes here it interact very weakly but it has a small interactions how many neutrino we will able to see in a in a some unit this is this the that calculation shows this is the number of electron we are supposed to see but in his experiment he found that number of interactions is roughly one third of it and this was not for this one year this is 1970 to 1990 95 almost 25 years this was continuing going on this experiment this is davis he says that i am not missing any neutrino if it's come to our instrument but this theory this calculation they said that i do not do any mistake in our calculations so this is right and davis says that my observation this is also right and then in parallel not only him there is a many many other experiment also comes this is the chlorine experiment what is davis there is a many other experiment also so let's say this is the number of the neutrino what we are supposed to interaction what with some unit we are supposed to see but in the really when you observe we observe somewhere here roughly half to one third okay this is the many many different experiment it was found in so that's the point is coming what is wrong this is this what is the as he explained the sun is no that some fusion occurs that many of this to see that much of energy we have that many of the neutron neutrino the neutrino come to the earth it should and also that part of weak interaction we know very well if the neutrino comes it will as he said that neutrino goes through this one light years but even one light years it has an interactions that calculation is very precisely known we know it then what can happen that why this is the experimental observations is that much different than what was predicted by our calculations so then this another hypothesis is that is this neutrino is that neutrino is there an oscillation that when the sun, neutrino is produced a sun when it come to the earth it convert to something else so that's this one of the speculations and i will try to talk about little more okay so then actually as he also shows that uh, there's a 
we have this confirmations that as you say that neutrino is a three kind of a neutrino electron type of neutrino if we have an our detectors is made of what is called the heavy water that means not the hydrogen it is a deuterium so you have a deuterium one proton and one uh, neutron and when the neutrino electron type neutrino interact it can produce these two protons but on the other hand if all three kind of neutrino it can have an another interaction it called the neutral kind interactions and there this the neutron and uh, uh, proton and neutron i can after the interaction we will see the neutron and protons so this experiment was designed such a way that it can dis uh, distinguishes that this kind of an interaction and this kind of interactions and in this interaction in this experiment it was found that if i just look up this new e which is produced as sun and that interactions what is the number proton protons we also know how many in this process how many event we do expect to see if i measure this number is coming roughly one third roughly one third but if i see this kind of an interactions then if i just add all of these three means this number and that is matches with what is the total number of neutrino produced at sun and what do we expect to see in the earth so it means this if i see these interactions the new e which is produced at sun and when it comes in our experiment e deuterium proton proton electron this number it is roughly one third of these expectations but if i look for these interactions then this all three of this flavor this uh, i do not know what this how it is interaction occur what which flavor it is but i know that if this is the kind of interaction occurs it can happen either this new e new mu new tau for all of them it can happen and then i can see the this kind of signatures i see the neutron i see a protons and if i see this number of event it matches exactly what we are supposed to see from the sun so this is this confirmed evidence that when the neutrino electron type neutrino produce at sun when it come to the earth they converted to something else other than this new e it converted to this new types of neutrino or electron types of uh, tau types of neutrino and as he also showed this is a kamiokande experiment the big experiment there also they found that is their detector somewhere they put in the underground about a kilometer underground they look for this cosmic ray neutrino as he showed uh, this is this cosmic ray particle comes and it produces that this kind of interaction happen cosmic ray particles it produces many things pion decay to the muon and then also muon decay to the electrons so we will see the some number of mu uh, uh, mu type neutrino and the electron type neutrino and your device you detect it is a mu type or electron type neutrino now you know the neutrino is coming from these directions or from these directions and they found that if the muon type neutrino which is coming from top that how many they are expected they have seen that many but the neutrino which is coming from the bottom and actually this is the picture this shows this how many of them i'm supposed to see from the which is coming from the top cos theta is this this is the cos theta is to 0 degree there this is more or less matches this is the solid point is the data and this uh, this point is this what we are expected to see if there is no oscillations but their observation it shows that they see the less number of event which the cos theta is minus 1 means which is coming from the below okay so actually these two experiment they confirm that actually neutrino which is coming which is going to the medium coming from the earth uh, from the sun to the earth or it produce in this atmosphere when it go through our earth material it change it flavors it go to the electron type to the muon type or tau type and this case particularly it says that it does not go to the mu new mu to the new e 
because this electron type neutrino what we are supposed to see from the bottom there is the same number there is no oscillation we do not see means the, if the if the muon type neutrino oscillate to the electron type then the number of electron type event should increase but that we have not seen so it says that this experiment says that we do not see it is not oscillating to the electron but it then oscillation to this other thing it can happen only through the tau so these two experiment actually both the experiment uh, they almost near the same time and as you mentioned in 2015 nobel prize was given for this confirmation of the neutrino oscillations so now what is oscillation oscillation means i have something and in the middle i do not see it and after sometimes again repeated repeatedly i see it okay so very simple lemon like if you see you know the water cycle in our earth we have an in the sea or the lake we have a waters and it evaporated so this is in the water it is evaporated it is in the vapor form and it become a cloud uh, in the cloud this is this so this evaporation this is a vapor this is another form this is not exactly physically what you see the water this is the slightly different and this is the cloud and when it cloud then precipitations in the precipitation when it's happen it may be rain or somewhere it may be snow so at the physically if you see this is the same water but in this whole cycle it has an kind of different kind of looking behavior but i know you know that this is this water this is the water whatever does it is just in physical change in this liquid to this gas vapor and again when it is stone when it is the snow it may be the solid form but water is water but if you go a little more oxygen cycle so i have been also this is the oxygen we have an oxygen we say that when you take the oxygen we produce the carbon dioxide so what is the oxygen in this cycle or in the oxygen it become carbon dioxide and again for the photosynthesis this carbon dioxide is taken and it become the oxygen so there you see this even though this is total oxygen is conserved but sometimes this oxygen become a carbon dioxide and its property can be completely different okay so i okay i would not say i would not exactly give the analogy to this neutrino oscillation but this is the thing i am saying that what you see it can be in the sometimes we may not exactly have the same properties of the same material it transform to something it it looks like it behaves slightly different way and actually this is a much more complicated way if you see the nitrogen cycle nitrogen cycle even more complicated but if you see the little more closer to the physics you know the polarization light light random light it can the electric my electric field can be any direction we call the unpolarized when it light pass through the polarizer the electric field axis is in this directions now this is the light when it pass through this my optical aptic medium and output of the light the polarization axis may change okay this polarization axis it may rotate it may change now if i say this is the analyzer i put if the axis is exactly 90 degree rotation in the analyzer if i put i will not see any signal here okay so that means the light it is produce when it goes to the medium okay or not exactly but just try to little bit think about this is an when the neutrino is propagated it propagated with the medium and the same thing way also light also produce at a certain medium so this is this uh, after certain distance it transfer to this uh, 90 degree and this polar analyzer which analyzer i try to see this after the analyzer i try to see the light if this rotate at 100 and 90 degree then in the analyzer if these two are axis are the same we will not see this light at all but if here instead of this analyzer i put the another analyzer which is 90 degree rotated then in that analyzer after that analyzer i will see this light so that means this light what is produced going through the medium after sometimes 
it may just rotate to 90 degree and the my instrument is not able to see but another instrument is able to see that light so again i'm saying that if i say, take this analogy that i have an instrument here which is supposed to detect the electron type neutrino but in that time in this when it goes to this medium it becomes the muon type neutrino i will not able to see the electron but i will see that as a muon or here i will see this is the optical light which is supposed to be this along these axis this analyzer if i put an instrument with this analyzer i will do not see it but if i rotate this 90 degree and the another instrument there i will see it so this is let's say that what i wrote here after passing through an optical medium polarization axis of light may be completely orthogonal so initially it may be along x axis now it is y axis and there is a two independent measurement of setup are required to measure those separately okay this is the same thing a electron and the electron type neutrino and muon type neutrino and so now this axis if i just optically this active medium i just increase double this rotate back again the same polarization state in the same instrument i will see this my light again so that means this a neutrino also when is oscillation we say that after that distance it become again electron type of neutrino it can be okay so this is the appearance and dependence in the type of setup while pass through the different length of the optical active mediums and so the light has a, this behavior why not any other in any other fundamental particles but of course we have to use us to follow some conservation rules other conservation rules in the physics like energy momentum and other conservation rules has to follow okay so that's the way we can say the oscillations this analyze analogy you people knows very i think you are very familiar with this i did not put it here you have the coordinate system x and y you just rotate the coordinate system in the new coordinate system you measure the things so that the things are the new coordinate system when you measure let's say this is my one coordinate system where this is the x and this is y axis new coordinate system i measuring this is the x prime and y prime axis this is related with the just this is the angular transformations okay so in the same analogy we try to interpret it this way that the neutrino when is the interaction it produce it produce as a new e or the new mu that is the interaction it produce but when it moves in the medium that time this is moving as a not this is an individually electron type or muon type neutrino it moves like and this is a two defined mass of the neutrino this is the that's i call the new one and new two now in the polarization experiment polarizations i say that i send a light of this linearly polarized and after some times i see this polarization axis is rotated how it is happened you know sir the answer linearly polarized light it goes when it go to the medium and after that previous pictures what i showed this optical axis is rotated so how it was in your textbook how did you read what was explained what was the explanation was given here linearly polarized light was said to be a combination of right and left circularly polarized light and left and circularly polarized light and then you say that these two light when it moves this two component the speed are the different in the two different light and left handed component is moved different way and at the end when i am combining again i then if the combination give the rotations and the neutrino oscillation nothing but that i have this neutrino is produced when it come to the medium it is a mixture of now i the initially i have a linearly polarized so that's for example i say it is an electron type neutrino when it come to the medium it moves that time it split into this is the electron this is the new uh, this is the one and two this is the new one and new two this two of neutrino now they are moving in the medium and their speed are different and where we are trying to go to the measures and there 
when we are going trying to see the interactions, then interaction will look only in the electron type or muon type. And when is going the different distance, that how much distance will go? Actually, this is the some pictures I show. This is the kind of an kind of an uh, qualitative way I put it. But this explanation is the simple as simple as this polarization experiment. So I produce an electron type electron type neutron type neutrino when it move in the medium it become this new one new two or even new three uh, the three flavor we have and when it moves in the medium all three moves in the slightly different velocities and then after that where we are going to the measure there i'll took all these three combinations and then see in this combination what is the probability of this this is this new u new me new tau that is the way we will see it in our experiment. Okay, so that's the neutrino. Okay, this part I put little bit of complications. I will not go in detail. So uh, here I show this. This is this two of them, two neutrino when it is that is an one angle. But we know that there's a three kind of neutrino. So these matrix forms I have to do from this one mass frame to my neutrino flavor frame. If I have to put it then here only one theta angle is sufficient to do that but in three dimensional if i have to do i need actually the four parameters okay i will not go in detail i need the four parameters and particularly for the two of this if i just uh, okay sorry two of the uh, if i the two flavors then if i just try to see that neutrino is produced electron type it propagated through this after a certain distance what is the probability it is the electron type or muon type? If I just try to calculate, this number is coming like this, neutrino E. If it is the final, you go to the flavor F, that goes to this. This is the theta. Theta is this my mixing, what you call the mixing angle theta. And this is this delta m square. This delta m square is the mass square different between this two masses what we are putting here new one and new two this two has a small masses what is the mass square difference and what is the distance is traversed and what is the energy of the neutrino okay so this is a two flavor it is like this and three flavor you have to go for like this is this uh, three or uh, three by three matrix and here actually we have this four different parameters so now in this our IONO experiment, what was this our one of the main goal? As I say, the neutrino, this, new, this is the uh, this is the delta m square. Where do you see the oscillation? Oscillation, this is oscillation phase is depends on this delta m square. And from the sun, when this is the neutrino is produced and sun come to the earth, in the sun when it propagated, from that I know the neutrino from that experiment, we know that. This is the this is the out of these three m1 and m2. That difference is which one is larger? Here is the sine square delta m square. So the delta m square it is this positive or negative. This is the term in this positive square. So in experimentally or if I see this experimentally, I do not know delta m square is this positive or negative. But with some other calculations. If we say go for this when this neutrino propagated inside the sun, there we can tell that in that case, this is m2 square is more than the m1 square. But now the third one, that we have no idea. So this out of the three of the mass, this is this one, two of them is m1 and m2. Third one can be top of this. And this delta m square we measure from the solar, uh, this is the Kamiokande uh, experiment. Uh, but this can be, this is the scenario or this is the scenario. One and two are that difference is very small, 5 into 10 to the minus 5 electron volt square. And third one may be below this. And also notice that here we do not put any scale. We say that this is the gap between them, but we do not also do not know the absolute value. So this is this one of the main point in this IONO experiment that to identify that it is the really the experiment. This is the scenario M1, M2, M3, 
or this is the scenario m3 is the below than m1 and m2 okay this is the one of the main goal of the i have no experiment other than this measuring this all this angle theta delta m square those things along with that we will measure this and okay this is just a one word i will not say the more emphasis on this this is the mixing we see this is the neutrino sectors is the mixing same thing we also see the mixing in the quark sectors our present knowledge in this mixing matrix what is the parameters quark sector and the neutrino sectors it is a very much different and this is this one of the basic or you can say the fundamental things we try to understand why the neutrino oscillation this mixing and the quark sector mixing they are different quark sector diagonal is almost one but here diagonal element is not equal to one hmm? i am finishing my time oh i have not come yet just okay <laughs> i did not come to the okay i may 10 minutes i'll take okay okay now if i say that neutrino detection technique in the instrument so just this is this uh, one of this uh, take home I will say that this is the point you just take. When we make the instrument, what should be the criteria of the instrument? So this is, you know, I most I hope most of you in your uh, 12 standard you did this experiment, magnetic field line measurement of a bar magnet. How many of you done this experiment? Okay, at least few of them. So what it is? This is the bar magnet you put. Here you put a small magnet needle, and the north pole is matches with the south. This is the north pole. So this is the compass is going here. Now you move this uh, compass little away, such that the south pole matches with this point, and that way you fill line this fill line, and eventually you will have a, this is the fill line you will map. So this is the little compass we use to measure the magnetic field line. Our goal is to measure the what is the magnetic field line of this magnet. So now, can you tell me that why we use this um, compass? No, why not I use an another magnet like this to measure the field? Yeah, the magnet's field will So that means that other magnet. This is the other magnet. Is this is the field line of this magnet? If I put the other magnet, that also has a field line. So now, what we will measure, we will see this com field, combined field line of these two, not of the individual one. So that means if I put this another magnet here, it disturbs this original magnetic field. Our goal is to measure the magnetic field of this magnet. So I cannot use this very large magnetic field, a large magnet to measure it. But this is also a magnet. So that means it also it produces a magnetic field. So it disturbs the magnetic field also. So hypothetically, we need a compass who does not have any magnetic field. So that means I need that, which does not have any his own magnetic field. Can we use that? We can't use that because if we, this does not interact with the field line, then I cannot tell that what is the field line. So this here is this uh, uh, thumb rule is that we have to have an instrument, um, our instrument, it should interact my source, what we are going to measure, but not so strongly that it destroy these original properties of this original, of the properties of this my source which I am going to measure. Okay. So that's the basic principles we used. It means this has to interact, but not so strongly. It has to interact, then only you can measure. But if it is interact too strongly, it distracts these properties. So that's the basic principle we use. And based on the principles, when you make the instrument, instrument has to be, this is the optics you have done. If your optical resolution is very good, you will see these two lines very separately, but the instrument is not good you just overlap the two lines you will not able to see and also in your instrument should not have a too much noisy background as professor Digge was mentioning 
we have to devise the instrument such that you reduce the background as he said if you have to see the star look the star in the night if you have to see the neutrino go to the underground to look the neutrino okay i'll just skip that okay these are the basic things what we say the basic building block so in the last few minutes i just talk about this what is the ino as i mentioned uh, this is the in the interactions many different particles will produce we have to screen out all the particle other than the neutrino and that is supposed to be come in this roughly 1.2 meters underground of this mountain and in this cavern whatever will be there this is this cavern where we will put our instrument this cavern is roughly 100 meter by 30 meters cavern and here we will put our 50 kiloton cycle detectors and if I go a little more, this is this detectors we will put. This is the 50 kiloton detectors. This width is roughly 16 meters, length is 50 meters, height is 15 meters. And it is the mainly made of the iron. Iron is the 50 kiloton irons. And this is actually more detailed pictures of this. And these detectors, as I said, we have to have a device. Basic principle, I say that uh, this part, uh, this we have to put a device which can interact with this my initial uh, particles which we are going to detect, but it should not distract much of this my initial particle. But the neutrino, it does not interact almost at all with this other particle. As I said, that it goes to this through this uh, one light years of the material. But so to have this neutrino to see the signal. First of all, here you have to do the neutrino, have to interact with this medium. That's why you have to make this so big instrument. So neutrino will first interact with the medium in iron. But then we have to put something, other thing that, that is the one of the thing we say that our on this resistive plate chamber, where after the interaction, the, what are the particles are produced, when they will go through the medium, they will interact with this my res uh, uh, resistive plate chambers. And there we will measure this, uh, we will measure those charged particles or these other particles and from that we will go back to this uh, whatever this initial neutrino, what is this energy, what is the momentum and eventually go for the oscillation parameters. And this is this okay more detail, uh, close view of that. This is the pickup panel and we will see the induced signal in the top and bottom side to opposite induced signals. And this is, as he said, and that's user. And this is made of iron. Uh, this is a magnet. And this is this only experiment in proposed or running, which can identify as a neutrino interaction. This is a neutrino or anti-neutrino type, or you can say that it is the produce the positively charged or negatively charged leptons or muons. So that's what we can only we can do because we made it with this magnetic field. So charge particle depending on the charge it will bend in the magnetic field. And this is the magnet if it come when it will come it will be the world's largest man-made magnet. Okay. And so this is this particularly we see the kind of interaction neutrino come will interact with this iron. It will produce the different kind of particles. Here I just put forget about this PID other thing. Just the particles, it has a defined momentum component. And when you go to the detectors in the resistive plate chamber, we will say this kind of a signatures. And this is another view of this defined kind of an event. Here we will put this iron and this our iron uh, magnet coil, etc. So this kind of a signature we will see. And from that signature, we will try to identify what kind of interaction, what is the energy, what is the direction of the neutrino. And then in futures, with this experiment, what we may have. At present, as I said, that there is an ambiguity. We do not know this hierarchy in which way it goes, m1, m2, m3, or m3, m1, m2. And also in this five parameters, we say that there are many mixing parameters, that many parameters are there. This is experimental measures. But when this experiment will come, we may have identified it is inverted or non-inverted, or also all these parameters, then we may be able to identify more precisely. Okay, that's the thing I think I'll stop here. Okay, so if you have any question or comment,
I just want to talk.